that uh, is not everlasting the youth of her, but we are able to, I mean, make her to become uh, aged very quickly. Okay, and uh, let's go back again to the Pleistocene, late Pleistocene. Uh, mammoth get extinct. Uh, there are several hypotheses explaining, in, even recently, just this year, I think a paper has been published uh, trying to explain why mammoth got extinct, uh, and uh, several explanations have been provided, like climate change, like uh, due to natural uh, forces, or uh, uh, the asteroids that have, have been hitting the Earth. But uh, everybody is always including the impact due to the intensive uh, hunting of mammoths by humans. So this was not secondary to the extinction of the mammoth. So we see that uh, uh, we have been. Uh, let's try. Let's just Okay. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, we see that uh, uh, global environmental changes. I like to speak about global environmental changes rather than uh, climate changes because uh, it's not only climate that is changing around us. Uh, have been uh, started much before the uh, industrial revolution. We usually refer to the industrial revolution at the time when Earth started changing because of human activities. This is basically not true. We started changing Earth uh, much, uh, much before the Industrial Revolution. And uh, probably one of the major shifts uh, occurred when we moved from hunting and gathering uh, natural products to agriculture and farming. And uh, this is usually seen as an improvement of the society because it allowed to uh, start getting more benefits from Earth uh, and to accumulate, I mean, something like uh, the um, harvest while uh, in recent years it has been suggested that maybe the shift from hunting and gathering uh, to agriculture and farming was also driven uh, by the fact that there was no much to hunt or to gather in nature so maybe and there are no evidences of that uh, we shifted not only because we wanted to improve our uh, I mean economic and uh, well-being uh, in general terms uh, but also because we need to cultivate something if we want to eat something and uh, of course shifting from hunting and gathering to agriculture and farming implies uh, deforestation desertification, urbanization uh, which was not building cities but building villages which was already a major change in uh, uh, natural environment so uh, Homo appeared on Earth about one million years ago. Our species, Homo sapiens, about 200,000 uh, years ago. But the Earth is living since about uh, 4,000 million years ago. So Earth can survive very well without humans, uh, but humans without Earth cannot survive. This should make us thinking about uh, how relevant is I mean, life on Earth for us. Uh, in such a short time, only 200,000 years, we have been able to alter many ecological processes, to destroy vulnerable habitats, and to drive many species <coughs> to extinction, and so on and so on. I mean, the list can be much longer than what I wrote here. So uh, our impact on the environment is extremely big. Mm -hmm. Just an example, uh, I found it very interesting, uh, uh, the deforestation in Europe, uh, uh, Modelers have been able, of course, there are some errors, probably. I'm not an expert in uh, forest science, so I cannot say how reliable or not it is, but it's published on a very reliable journal, so I trust the colleagues. Uh, we're able to model the change in uh, land cover in Europe, uh, and we can see that uh, thousands of years before Christ, there was quite large uh, cover of forest in Europe, and already, I mean, thousand seven, I mean, thousand uh, years later, in uh, 350 years after um, Christ, uh, crisis, we have uh, uh, already uh, a large area in Central Europe, Europe that has been deforested, and deforestation went on, on, and on, but it didn't start uh, in the time of the Industrial Revolution. It started much earlier. And so uh, we have to think about uh, what we assume to be the baseline 
for the environmental condition. I'm not the person that says that we have to go back to the before Christ time to have a lot of trees around us, uh, but we have to think that that was the situation in Europe 3,000 years ago, which is not far away from us in time. And why the presentation went on so quickly? Uh, if you compare on one side uh, the uh, deforestation in time and on the other side the population density and deforestation, you see that there is a very strong link between the population density and the deforestation process. So it's very likely, it's not a, I mean, an evidence, but it's very likely that uh, uh, human increase of human population has been leading to the reduction in forest cover in Europe. And we have seen uh, figures uh, that uh, Luigi Bruzzi has shown just a few minutes ago about how population is changing. A good correlation exists also between uh, species extinction and human populations. You see that uh, uh, in the last uh, couple of hundred years, uh, the population has been rising quite sharply and uh, the extinction rate was rising. Mainly data refers to terrestrial species. We know very little about marine species, so we cannot say if there was extinction at the sea, but for terrestrial species, the extinction rate is strictly related to the population, human population. Hmm? Oh. And here we see how population was growing to the last uh, half million years. It was very stable hmm? until, uh, I mean, basically an industrial revolution in this case. We have seen that the uh, outbreak of diseases like the black pest led to a drop, small drop in population, in human population, but uh, then we have this sharp rise of human populations and human population. And this is obviously the main driver in the last years, but it's not the only driver of changes that occur in the world. Focusing on the last uh, 100 years, uh, we expect to uh, have a, the, the population to triplicate in a very short time. And obviously, uh, this means that uh, the use of natural resources is going to at least triplicate, but probably grow even more because a uh, uh, large portion of human population is uh, willing to improve her condition. And why human population is growing so fast? Uh, in ecology, we have the concept of carrying capacity, but this doesn't fit to the human population. Why it doesn't fit? Uh, it's uh, because we are too well adapted to the environment so that we can grow indefinitely. Like bacteria on the plate, uh, they grow very quickly and very fast until they exhaust the uh, substrata and then they die. Hmm? So the current capacity is uh, a buffer to our extinction, basically, which uh, brings the population to a certain I mean, density and then stops it from growing and exhausting the resources on which the population relies. Hmm? Ecological, <laughs> the current capacity is, uh, is missing in, uh, in our population, but uh, is also missing in uh, economy. I mean, we would like economy to grow forever, and from this point of view, the idea of sustainable development as a, an oxymoron uh, is really acceptable because uh, economy is a subsystem within the earth ecosystem. And the, eco the subsystem can be bigger than the ecosystem itself. So we have a limit to the growth of economy. Hmm? We have, I mean, many opportunities to see scenarios for the future. We have only one Earth, uh, and we need already more than one Earth, uh, and uh, soon we will need uh, more than one Earth to, to keep things going in this way. And this is something that we cannot have, basically. There is no way. <laughs> and what will happen when our needs will grow indefinitely? That's where Rio 20 years ago and uh, Rio <laughs> nowadays try to answer the question that they try to answer. And the point is also where we can grow. Here you can see from the UNEP uh, map uh, which area has been largely developed in the world. And you can see that, uh, I mean, basically the urbanized area, where by urbanization I mean uh, 
area that has been exploited by humans, which means that is not native land, but is land that has been shifted from natural use to human use. And you can see that a little bit of uh, pristine land, of course, pristine, let's say pristine, in North America, a little bit in Southern America, a little bit in Asia. There are deserts, of course, that have not been exploited by us, but then the rest is rather red. Hmm? So where we can go to grow further? Huh? And uh, Rio was trying to answer to those questions, and as Marlon Cuzzi was saying, being in a United Nations conference, uh, you have to achieve the results uh, uh, with the agreement of all the parties attend the conference, uh, and uh, okay, <laughs> and uh, and uh, you have to achieve the compromise with all the parties attend the conference. And so, <coughs> I will go quickly through those slides because it's just the goals and objectives of the Rio plus 20 and probably all of you know them very well. So, uh, Rio uh, conference uh, uh, was addressed in a couple of teams. Basically, what has been done and what we have to do to achieve the sustainable development. That was uh, uh, the wish of the Rio 92. And uh, hot topics were green economy mm, and uh, definition of the framework for the sustainable development uh, which appears like uh, if it, they are very practical and achievable uh, goals, uh, while well, indeed they are not. The conference was attended by 40,000 people, it's a city basically, that was meeting there, and uh, uh, I can uh, had the opportunity to attend the United Nations conference uh, last year, with only 4,000 people, uh, I must say that it was really a mess, uh, and uh, it was very hard to, I mean, to achieve, you can have very good contact personally with some people, but uh, the, um, the session themselves were really uh, very political and not very effective in achieving the goals that were supposed to meet. And uh, uh, the document. I read the document, uh, of course, uh, for the document they received a lot of inputs, uh, thousands of inputs, they produced thousands of pages. I have read the document, I have to say, and I'm not sure I'm going to read the 6,500 6, pages of the document, maybe I will read the synthesis, uh, but uh, uh, I'm wondering if all the investment that has been made on the Rio Plus 20 is cost effective. Economists like to say that we only have to judge the cost and benefits. Uh, it's easy to judge the cost of such a conference, but it's much harder to judge the benefits of such a conference. Hmm? Sustainable development uh, in the last years uh, has not been achieved to me, but uh, it has been uh, shifted from being a, a goal, a scope to uh, conserve the environment uh, to a brand uh, to promote new goods uh, which are theoretically at least sustainable but often sustainable are not and uh, we have to be careful when you think about sustainable development because uh, maybe there is a undesired gift uh, inside the <laughs> terms sustainable development the debate about sustainable development is based on three aspects economy society and environment of course the three aspects has to be integrated there are different, I mean, graphical options to show, but to me, the one that I like more is the concentric circles, but the core of the sustainable development must be the nature and the environment, it cannot be economy, because the, if the core is economy, it's not going to stay sustainable development. Sorry, Vanda. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what is ecology and what is economy? Ecology is science that is studying the environment and is based on natural laws. We haven't set up the natural laws. I mean, if you drop an apple, it falls down. Not because we decide that it has to fall down, but because the natural laws say that it falls down. Okay. Plants are doing the photosynthesis. Herbivores are eating plants and carnivores are eating herbivores. That's it. We can do much about that. Economy are the laws about the house and uh, they are not law that have been imposed by nature, but by us. We selected the law, we decided which are the law, 
and we impose people to follow the laws. Are those the right laws? We don't know. Basically, we probably also following the last years, uh, the deep crisis that we are facing again, uh, probably those laws are not totally right. Maybe they can be improved. <coughs> hmm? And what will happen if the laws of nature will conflict with the laws of economy? I mean, we are going to lose the gross uh, production of our country. We are to be poorer in the first stage. But if we go on in uh, exploiting nature, I think that the law of nature will win against the law of us, of economy. Hmm? And uh, we know that in the past, uh, because of several reasons, uh, including the over-exploitation of some resources, it has been proposed, suggested, Earth survived five mass extinctions uh, that, that occurred spread in time over millions of years, the last not much time ago, about 65 millions of years ago. And I believe that Earth will be able to face the sixth mass extinction. I mean, it will survive without problems. What cannot survive as a mass extinction is us. I mean, we are not needed by Earth to survive. We need Earth to survive. And we are still trying to gamble about that and say, no, I mean, we are able, we have technology, and technology solves all the issues. The last slide, uh, I mean, I like to stress that uh, there is an unbearable pressure by humanity on Earth. And this pressure is really unbearable, and we have to deal with that as soon as possible. It is not too late. It's not just a word play with the book of Milan Kundera, the unbearable likeness of being, I think it is, in English, but uh, we can see in it an approach to sustainability or long-term long lasting humanity, because Kundera thinks that uh, things happen once and never again. There is no way to go back. Hmm? This is opposite to philosophies that are thinking about the possibility of things to recur in time and having it with the option always to fix and repair what we have done, which is, in my opinion, not true. And that's my view of sustainable development. Thank you, Marco, for your presentation. Very interesting. I, I want just to, to add a very short sentence to, to get uh, the sustainable development, me, we need less meeting and more action. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely, yes. I mean, but it's, uh, uh, next speaker is, I don't remember, I will check here. Franco Casali. Huh?